and pleased to say that the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act is now law. Over the next two years, this plan will save or create 3.5 million jobs. More than 90 percent of these jobs will be in the private sector. We have launched a housing plan that will help responsible families facing the threat of foreclosure lower their monthly payments and refinance their mortgages. We will double this nation's supply of renewable energy in the next three years, an investment that will spur not only new discoveries in energy, but breakthroughs in medicine and science and technology. We will soon lay down thousands of miles of power lines that can carry new energy to cities and towns across this country. And we will put Americans to work, making our homes and buildings more efficient so that we can save billions of dollars on our energy. We will launch a new effort to conquer a disease that has touched the life of nearly every American, including me, by seeking a cure for cancer in our time. And it makes the largest investment ever in preventive care because that's one of the best ways to keep our people healthy and our costs under control. It's a commitment that's paid for in part by efficiencies in our system that are long overdue. I held a fiscal summit where I pledged to cut the deficit in half by the end of my first term in office. My administration has also begun to go line by line through the federal budget in order to eliminate wasteful and ineffective programs. We have already identified $2 trillion in savings over the next decade. If your family earns less than $250,000 a year, you will not see your taxes increased a single dime. We must also address the growing cost in Medicare and Social Security. And we must also begin a conversation on how to do the same for Social Security while creating tax-free universal savings accounts for all Americans. I have ordered the closing of the detention center at Guantanamo Bay. Tomorrow I'll visit Tampa, Florida where workers will soon break ground on a new high-speed railroad funded by the Recovery Act, an investment that could lead to the world's cheapest solar cells or treatment that kills cancer cells but leaves healthy ones. And that means building a new generation of safe, clean nuclear power plants and passing a comprehensive energy and climate bill with incentives that will finally make clean energy the profitable kind of energy in America. Our approach would preserve the right of Americans who have insurance to keep their doctor in their plan. It would reduce costs and premiums for millions of families and businesses. Our approach would bring down the deficit by as much as $1 trillion over the next two decades. Starting in 2011, we are prepared to freeze government spending for three years. Like any cash-strapped family, we will work within a budget to invest in what we need and sacrifice what we don't. And if I have to enforce this discipline by veto, I will. We will continue to go through the budget, line by line, to eliminate programs that we can't afford and don't work. That's why I've called for a bipartisan fiscal commission. This can't be one of those Washington gimmicks that lets us pretend we solve a problem. Store the pay-as-you-go law, publish all earmark requests on a single website. I will not give up on trying to change the tone of our politics. We should continue the work of fixing our broken immigration system to secure our borders and enforce our laws and ensure that everyone who plays by the rules can contribute to our economy and enrich our nation. Some folks want wind and solar. Others want nuclear, clean coal, and natural gas. To meet this goal, we will need them all. That we should take on, once and for all, the issue of illegal immigration. And I am prepared to work with Republicans and Democrats to protect our borders, enforce our laws, and address the millions of undocumented workers who are now living in the shadows. We'll put more Americans to work repairing crumbling roads and bridges. We'll make sure this is fully paid for, attract private investment, and pick projects based what's best for the economy, not politicians. Within 25 years, our goal is to give 80 percent of Americans access to high-speed rail. Within the next five years, we'll make it possible for businesses to deploy the next generation of high-speed wireless coverage to 98 percent of all Americans. Get rid of the loopholes. Level the playing field and use the savings to lower the corporate tax rate for the first time in 25 years to reduce barriers to growth and investment. When we find rules that put an unnecessary burden on businesses, we will fix them. I am proposing that starting this year, we freeze annual domestic spending for the next five years. The health insurance law we passed last year will slow these rising costs. Still, I'm willing to look at other ideas to bring down costs, including one that Republicans suggested last year, medical malpractice reform to rein in frivolous lawsuits. We should give them a government that's more competent and more efficient. There are 12 different agencies that deal with exports. There are at least five different agencies that deal with housing policy. Then there's my favorite example. The Interior Department is in charge of salmon while they're in freshwater, but 
the Commerce Department handles them when they're in salt water. Because you deserve to know exactly how and where your tax dollars are being spent, you'll be able to go to a website and get that information for the very first time in history. If a bill comes to my desk with earmarks inside, I will veto it. Now, companies that choose to stay in America get hit with one of the highest tax rates in the world. So let's change it. And I want to cut through the maze of confusing training programs so that from now on, people like Jackie have one program, one website, and one place to go for all the information and help that they need. It is time to turn our unemployment system into a re-employment system that puts people to work. I believe as strongly as ever that we should take on illegal immigration. I am proposing that every state requires that all students stay in high school until they graduate or turn 18. I'm directing my administration to open more than 75 percent of our potential offshore oil and gas resources. This country needs an all-out, all-of-the-above strategy that develops every available source of American energy. We have a supply of natural gas that can last America nearly 100 years. And my administration will take every possible action to safely develop this energy. I've ordered every federal agency to eliminate rules that don't make sense. We'll also establish a financial crimes unit of highly trained investigators to crack down on large-scale fraud and protect people's investments. I've asked this Congress to grant me the authority to consolidate the federal bureaucracy. We need to end the notion that the two parties must be locked in a perpetual campaign of mutual destruction. On Medicare, I'm prepared to enact reforms that will achieve the same amount of health care savings by the beginning of the next decade as the reforms proposed by the bipartisan Simpson-Bowles Commission. We'll reduce taxpayer subsidies to prescription drug companies and ask more from the wealthiest seniors. We'll bring down costs by changing the way our government pays for Medicare. We should do what leaders in both parties have already suggested, by getting rid of tax loopholes and deductions for the well-off and the well-connected. Now is our best chance for bipartisan, comprehensive tax reform that encourages job creation and helps bring down the deficit. That's why my administration will keep cutting red tape and speeding up new oil and gas permits. I propose we use some of our oil and gas revenues to fund an energy security trust that will drive new research and technology. I propose a fix-it-first program to put people to work as soon as possible on our most urgent repair. I propose working with states to make high-quality preschool available to every single child in America. I ask Congress to change the Higher Education Act so that affordability and value are included in determining which colleges receive certain types of federal aid. The time has come to pass comprehensive immigration reform and raise the federal minimum wage to $9 an hour. Let's offer incentives to companies that hire Americans who've got what it takes to fill that job opening but have been out of work so long that no one will give them a chance. Let's put people back to work rebuilding vacant homes in rundown neighborhoods. We'll give new tax credits to businesses that hire and invest. We'll work to strengthen families by removing the financial deterrence to marriage for low-income couples and do more to encourage fatherhood. And by the end of next year, our war in Afghanistan will be over. Our government shouldn't make promises we cannot keep, but we must keep the promises we've already made. Let's work together to close those loopholes and those incentives to ship jobs overseas and lower tax rates for businesses that create jobs and take the money we save from this transition to tax reform to create jobs rebuilding our roads. But I'll act on my own to slash bureaucracy, and my administration's launched two hubs for high-tech manufacturing. Tonight, I'm announcing we'll launch six more this year. Let's do more to help the entrepreneurs and small business owners who create most new jobs in America. There are an entire industries to be built based on vaccines that stay ahead of drug-resistant bacteria or paper-thin material that's stronger than steel. And let's pass a patent reform bill. Businesses plan to invest almost $100 billion dollars in new factories that use natural gas. I'll cut red tape to help states get those factories built. Let's continue that progress with a smarter tax policy that stops giving $4 billion a year to fossil fuel industries that don't need it so we can invest more in fuels of the future that do. In the coming months, I'll build on that success by setting new standards for our trucks. Let's get immigration reform done this year. An across-the-board reform of America's training programs to make sure they have one mission. Train Americans with the skills employers need and match them to good jobs that need to be filled right now. We can help Americans return to the workforce faster by reforming unemployment insurance. I'm going to pull together a coalition of elected officials, business leaders, and philanthropists willing to help more kids access the high-quality pre-K that they need. This year, let's all come together, Congress, the White House, 
businesses from Wall Street to Main Street to give every woman the opportunity she deserves. Fix that by lifting the minimum wage to $10.10, then the earned income tax credit. So let's work together to strengthen the credit. Fix an upside down tax code that gives big tax breaks to help the wealthy save, but does little or nothing for middle class America. Offer every American access to an automatic IRA on the job. And the bipartisan commission I appointed came together and have offered reforms so that no one has to wait more than a half hour to vote. And I intend to keep trying, with or without Congress, to help stop more tragedies from visiting innocent Americans in our movie theaters and our shopping malls or schools like Sandy Hook. With Afghan forces now in the lead for their own security, together with our allies, we will complete our mission there by the end of this year. This needs to be the year we close the prison at Guantanamo Bay. American diplomacy is supporting Israelis and Palestinians as they engage in the difficult but necessary talks to end the conflict there. Iran has begun to eliminate its stockpile of higher levels of enriched uranium. It's not installing advanced centrifuges. If Iran's leaders do not seize this opportunity, then I will be the first to call for more sanctions. We'll keep slashing that backlog so our veterans receive the benefits they've earned and our wounded warriors receive the health care, including the mental health care that they need. My budget will address each of these issues, lowering the taxes of working families and putting thousands of dollars back into their pockets each year. My plan will make quality child care more available and more affordable by creating more slots and a new tax cut of up to $3,000 per child per year. I'll be taking new action to help states adopt paid leave laws. Congress still needs to pass a law that makes sure a woman is paid the same as a man. Two years of college becomes as free and universal in America as high school is today. Make sure those already burdened with student loans can reduce their monthly payments so that student debt doesn't derail anyone's dream. Pass a bipartisan infrastructure plan. Tonight I'm launching a new precision medicine initiative to bring us closer to curing diseases like cancer and diabetes and to give all of us access to the personalized information we need to keep ourselves and our families healthier. I intend to protect a free and open internet, extend its reach, to every classroom and every community and help folks build the fastest network. I want Americans to win the race for the kinds of discoveries that unleash new jobs, converting sunlight into liquid fuel, creating revolutionary prosthetics so that a veteran who gave his arms for his country can play catch with his kids again, pushing out into the solar system, not just to visit, but to stay. Let's close loopholes. So we stop rewarding companies that keep profits abroad and reward those that invest here in America. Let's use those savings to rebuild our infrastructure and to make it more attractive for companies to bring jobs home. Let's simplify the system and let a small business owner file based on her actual bank statement instead of the number of accountants she can afford. Let's close the loopholes that lead to inequality by allowing the top 1% to avoid paying taxes on their accumulated wealth. We can use that money to help more families pay for childcare and send their kids to college. We are leading a broad coalition including Arab nations, to degrade and ultimately destroy this terrorist group. No foreign nation, no hacker, should be able to shut down our networks, steal our trade secrets, or invade the privacy of American families, especially our kids. Since I've been president, we've worked responsibly to cut the population of Gitmo in half. Now it is time to finish the job. It's a good thing that for the first time in 40 years, the crime rate and the incarceration rate have come down together. And use that as a starting point for Democrats and Republicans to reform America's criminal justice system. And I commit to every Republican here tonight that I will not only seek out your ideas, I will seek to work with you to make this country stronger.